What's up, my friend? Today I'll be reacting to XB70 Valkyrie American Mesh 3 Super Bomber Ever Built. But before I go into that, let me ask you for one thing. If you can leave a like on this video, thank you so much for that. It's the best way to show support. If you can subscribe, oh man, forget about it. You make my day. Have that in consideration. Now, let's go into the video. Link for the original one in my description. You guys end up recommending this one quite a lot, so I expect a crazy video. Okay, stop it, stop it right there. What the hell is that? That's giant. Oh my god, and look at all the the things on the back. Okay, this is scary. This plane, it's America's Mach 3 super bomber that you never heard about. Oh, and looks so badass. And evil almost. I like it. The North American XB-70 Valkyrie was the largest and fastest bomber ever built by the United States, Wait. but the massive six-engine Mach 3 capable jet never entered production. Only one surviving prototype sits in a museum in Dayton, Ohio, even as the Boeing B-50... Okay, so there is only one in the world. Okay. I wonder why, actually. Okay, this will be a fascinating video. The it was supposed to one day replace continues to soldier on. Named Valkyrie after the female battle spirits of Norse mythology, the bomber was built to penetrate Soviet air defenses in a nuclear war and deliver thermonuclear bombs on targets. The XB-70 was 196 feet long, 31 feet tall at the tail. Oh, okay. And had a I have to stop it again. I'm sorry. This looks insane. Oh my God. This is the type of plane you, you want if you are in deep trouble. You know, we are losing the war. Send Val Valkyrie. And everything will be solved. 100%. Maximum gross weight of 521,000 pounds. The Valkyrie was fabricated using stainless steel honeycomb sandwich panels and titanium. It I cannot even look that direct in the eyes. Um, it scares me. It was designed to make use of a phenomenon called compression lift, achieved when the shock wave generated by the airplane flying at supersonic speeds supports part of the airplane's weight. This unique characteristic reduced drag and was one of the secrets of the XB-70's performance. Mm. The idea behind the XB-70 originated in the 1950s, when it was assumed even greater speeds and altitudes would enable American bombers to survive against Soviet air defenses unmolested on their way to delivering their doomsday payloads. At the time, the only effective defense against bombers were fighters and anti-aircraft artillery. Even then, anti-aircraft guns were only marginally effective and interceptors were increasingly challenged by ever- Okay, what is that also? That's not a real plane, right? That's some type of a AI image. 100% not a real plane. Proving bomber performance. But the introduction of the first Soviet surface-to-air missiles in the late 1950s changed that picture dramatically. Suddenly, the XB-70 were much more vulnerable and even its Mach 3 speeds could not guarantee That's insane. survival. To cope with the rising threat of Soviet missiles, the United States Air Force began to fly missions at a lower altitude where the enemy radar would have more trouble tracking its target. Mm. But at these lower altitudes, the XB-70 Valkyrie would be much less effective. So much, in fact, that it would not perform better than the B-52, the bomber it was meant to replace. Mission range and fuel economy would also suffer when flying lower, Another nail in the coffin for the XB-70 project was the development of ICBM missiles in the late 1950s. The Valkyrie was specifically designed to carry the heavy nuclear weapons, but now the ICBMs threatened the role of the aircraft. President Eisenhower was not a big believer in the Valkyrie project as he saw no real need for the aircraft. His main points against it were the same as the above mentioned ones. Rockets and missiles were a threat, and ICBMs were a cheaper, more effective way of doing the same thing, he said. He also pointed out that the aircraft, that was still in development, would be obsolete by the time it was ready for full-scale manufacturing. Okay. Technology would simply have caught up to the Valkyrie. The Eisenhower administration cut the project to a single prototype. Kennedy, however, endorsed the XB-70, and it actually became part of his election campaign to do so. But at the time he became president, the XB-70 Valkyrie project had already cost equal to almost $7 billion today. A hefty... Oh man, $7 billion. Okay, look, 
maybe not the best uh, plane actually now listening to, to to the arguments but can we all agree that the design was fantastic because I, I thought the design was incredible for this one some for a bomber so in 1961 he cancelled the project it had become too expensive and unnecessary hmm. instead Kennedy changed the XB70 program to a research project the Valkyrie was perfect for exploring the effects of supersonic flight and propulsion North American Aviation completed the first prototype called AV-1 in May 1964 in Palmdale, California. A second prototype, the AV-2, quickly followed in October the same year. A third prototype was planned but got canceled. In September 1964, the first XB-70 embarked on its first flight. The Valkyrie first went supersonic when it reached Mach 1.1 on the third test flight on October 12, 1964. It first surpassed Mach 3 on October 14, 1965, where the AV-1 reached Mach 3.02 at 70,000 feet. The AV-2 followed its sister's footsteps and became the one to hold the record for the highest speed of the two prototype aircraft. Oh, interesting. I love In it. In April 1966, the AV-2 reached and maintained a top speed of Mach 3.08 for 20 minutes. A month later, the AV-2 flew at Mach 3.06 for 32 minutes and covered a distance of 3,900 kilometers, or 2,400 miles, in the 91 minutes flight time. Tragedy struck on June 8, 1966, when the second XB-70 prototype was destroyed in a crash after a mid-air collision with its F-104N chase plane. Two people were killed and one was severely injured during the accident, Okay. The loss of the second aircraft, which was much more capable than the first, was a huge setback. Testing, however, continued until February 4th, 1969. Ultimately, the first XB-70 logged 83 flights, totaling 160 hours and 16 minutes, while the second XB-70 logged 46 flights, totaling 92 hours and 22 minutes, according to NASA. The XB-70 Valkyrie last went supersonic in December 1968. In February the following year, the Valkyrie AV-1 took its final flight to the National Museum of the United States Air Force near Dayton, Ohio. It's still on display there. The XB-70 Valkyrie was indeed ahead of its time. Despite a turbulent life from development to retirement, the futuristic supersonic bomber amazes with its looks, performance, and history. Yeah. It was a product of... Actually, I would love to, to see one in person. I mean, I was joking a bit at the, at the beginning, but uh, there is a lot of history actually on this one. And um, like uh, the narrator said, it was a bit ahead of, of, of his time. So really, really interesting stuff. The Cold War, where experts thought that Mach 3 speeds and higher altitudes could protect a bomber carrying nuclear weapons. But development costs and advances in technology eventually made the XB-70 Valkyrie unnecessary. Yeah, makes sense. Instead, the bomber was used in a research project aimed to study supersonic flight. The Valkyrie generated valuable insights about supersonic flight, insights that were later used in other military aircraft. The okay, so not everything was a, a waste of money, you know, uh, because the research you guys are putting there, nowadays you may even... Uh, uh, use it. Uh, so uh, I like it. 1966 became a darker chapter in the history of the aircraft, but the remaining Valkyrie continued its work in research and eventually went on display in 1969 in it's a museum crazy. in Ohio. The XB-70, while a technological wonder at the time, was the wrong plane for the wrong time. It came at a time when ballistic missiles were thought to be supplanting manned bombers. Moreover, it was being developed at a time when it was increasingly apparent that high speed and high altitude were not sufficient protection against surface-to-air missiles or the next generation of Soviet fighters. Though its intended role as a strategic bomber was unsuccessful, the Valkyrie project contributed to later projects like the B-1B Lancer bomber, the SR-71 Blackbird spy plane, and other projects. More is the no also look quite insane. <laughs> It would likely have been the fastest bomber ever. Yeah, I believe it. I mean, and let's be real: if you are the enemy and you see that, uh, you probably think, "Yeah, we are done." 
that's gonna destroy all of us. I would at least. The wheels are so small, actually. <laughs> Or maybe the plane is too big, one of the two. This is a tremendous channel, by the way. I, I always say for you guys to check the link on the description. And for this one, it makes even more sense, you know, because this channel, I react to a lot of his stuff uh, and, and I love it, you know. So I'll always also give, give support to the, the original creator. <laughs> it looks kind of unreal. Oh, uh, that's so cool. Well, another great video. Hope you guys end up enjoying this one. If that's the case, do not forget to leave a like. Always means a lot to, to, to me. Um, when I say like, also subscribe, leave a comment, all the good stuff. And see you guys next time. Bye, my friends.